Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 93. Happy the man whose heart can rest, assured God's goodness ne'er will cease. Each day complete with joy is blessed. God keepeth him in perfect peace. Hymn number 93. The scriptural will be given by Karen from California. 2 Corinthians Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not, the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Revelation. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, 
The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 86. God's glory is a wondrous thing, most strange in all its ways, and of all things on earth, least like what men agree to praise. Hymn number 86.
welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion where we discuss this week's lesson and other topics that need to be covered and learn how to practice better this tremendous science of Christianity, Christian science. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, or if you'd like to hear it again, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you'll also be able to find it on our YouTube channel and our Vimeo channel. We have a Sunday school that meets at 11 every Sunday. And that Sunday school is available for children anywhere. Many of our students do not live in the area, and they attend via telephone by way of a teleconference number that is dedicated to our Sunday school. What this means is that if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, your child can attend. Just call us, we'll give you the number, and we'd be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives literally transformed through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services and meetings, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. So if you do show up, you can bring the whole family. Our next Bible study session will be held on Saturday, December 16 at 10 a.m. So look, uh, look for the study questions on our website and uh, please join us this is advance notice, Saturday, December 16 at 10 a.m. Speaking of websites, we have many websites, all in different languages. And as a result, this pure truth of Christian science is reaching people around the globe, in many cases in their own language. And for that, we are very grateful that people are finding us through the website, through our YouTube channel, are finding the truth of Christian science. And everything that is available on all of our websites is free. There is no charge to read, listen, download, print. Everything that we provide is free of charge. And that is why we are very grateful to those of you who support this cause financially. Every dollar is put to good use. And we are very grateful for those of you who do. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony of healing from the chapter entitled Fruitage in the Christian Science Textbook, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science Textbook. And that reading will now be given by Elsie from Alabama. I shall read from page 697, titled Light Out of Darkness. I have received so much benefit from the testimonies in the Sentinel and Journal that I sent mine, hoping it may cheer some struggling heart. I was reared by a kind and loving Christian parent and was a member of an Orthodox church for over 20 years, but I was never satisfied. I was filled with fear and bound down by the false gods of this world, sin, disease, and poverty. Consequently, 
every way I turned and in everything I attempted to do, I was met with disappointment and failure. But God was leading me into a different life. My interest was first awakened to Christian science about 13 years ago, and I have been a willing disciple ever since. Through the reading of science and health, I was healed of chronic catar, laryngitis, and it, was, it enabled me to lay off my glasses. Christian science has not only helped me mentally, morally, and physically, but the greatest blessing of all is the spiritual uplifting, which enabled me to know that God is both able and willing to care for his children. If we are but willing to do our part and bear the cross, which, though it seems heavy at times, always brings a sure reward, Christian science has not only helped me, but it has enabled me to help others. The Bible is a new book to me. I now see what Jesus meant when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. My heart goes out in gratitude to Mrs. Eddy for the work she has done and is still doing for the world. And to God, I am most grateful that he has guided me into the truth, that I may have life and have it more abundantly. Mrs. M. M., Chicago, Illinois. The Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts in their denominational spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated or fettered by human hypotheses, and authorized by Christ. Today's lesson sermon can be found on page 14 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Mortals and Immortals. The golden text is from Jude. Keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The responsive reading is from Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Carol will now read. I will read from the Bible. Psalms. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Romans. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Matthew. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison. And ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. 
Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. 1 Timothy They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things. And before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. 1 Corinthians Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Bruce will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. 
Man is immortal and lives by divine authority. Man, in science, is neither young nor old. He has neither birth nor death. He is not a beast, a vegetable, nor a migratory mind. He does not pass from matter to mind, from the mortal to the immortal, from evil to good, or from good to evil. Such admissions cast us headlong into darkness and dogma. Even Shakespeare's poetry pictures age as infancy, as helplessness and decadence, instead of assigning to man the everlasting grandeur and immortality of development, power, and prestige. One moment of divine consciousness or the spiritual understanding of life and love is a foretaste of eternity. This exalted view, obtained and retained when the science of being is understood, would bridge over with life discerned spiritually the interval of death, and man would be in the full consciousness of his immortality and eternal harmony, where sin, sickness, and death are unknown. Eternity is God's measurement of soul-filled years. The conceptions of mortal erring thought must give way to the ideal of all that is perfect and eternal. Through many generations, human beliefs will be attaining diviner conceptions, and the immortal and perfect model of God's creation will finally be seen as the only true conception of being. A mortal sinner is not God's man. Mortals are the counterfeits of immortals. They are the children of the wicked one, or the one evil, which declares that man begins in dust or as a material embryo. In divine science, God and the real man are inseparable as divine principle and idea. Mortals are not fallen children of God. They never had a perfect state of being, which may subsequently be regained. They were, from the beginning of mortal history, conceived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. Remember that the scriptures say of mortal man, As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field so he flourisheth, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone and the place thereof shall know it no more. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. If we array thought in mortal vestures, it must lose its immortal nature. If we look to the body for pleasure, we find pain. For life, we find death. 
for truth, we find error. For spirit, we find its opposite, matter. Now, reverse this action. Look away from the body into truth and love, the principle of all happiness, harmony, and immortality. Hold thought steadfastly to the enduring, the good, and the true, and you will bring these into your experience proportionably to their occupancy of your thoughts. We walk in the footsteps of truth and love by following the example of our master in the understanding of divine metaphysics. Christianity is the basis of true healing. Whatever holds human thought in line with unselfed love receives directly the divine power. Being is holiness, harmony, immortality. It is already proved that a knowledge of this, even in small degree, will uplift the physical and moral standard of mortals, will increase longevity, will purify and elevate character. Thus, progress will finally destroy all error and bring immortality to light. The body will reflect what governs it, whether it be truth or error, understanding or belief, spirit or matter. Therefore, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Be watchful, sober, and vigilant. The way is straight and narrow which leads to the understanding that God is the only life. It is a warfare with the flesh in which we must conquer sin, sickness, and death, either here or hereafter, certainly before we can reach the goal of spirit or life in God, Paul writes, If Christ, truth, be not risen, then is our preaching vain. That is, if the idea of the supremacy of spirit, which is the true conception of being, come not to your thought, you cannot be benefited by what I say. Jesus said substantially, he that believeth in me shall not see death. That is, he who perceives the true idea of life loses his belief in death. He who has the true idea of good loses all sense of evil. And by reason of this, is being ushered into the undying realities of spirit. Such a one abideth in life, life obtained not of the body, incapable of supporting life, but of truth, unfolding its own immortal idea. Jesus gave the true idea of being, which results in infinite blessings to mortals. Man's privilege at this supreme moment is to prove the words of our Master. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. To divest thought of false trusts 
and material evidences in order that the spiritual facts of being may appear. This is the great attainment by means of which we shall sweep away the false and give place to the true. Thus we may establish in truth the temple or body whose builder and maker is God. We should consecrate existence not to the unknown God whom we ignorantly worship, but to the eternal builder, the everlasting Father, to the life which mortal sense cannot impair nor mortal belief destroy. We must realize the ability of mental might to offset human misconceptions and to replace them with the life which is spiritual, not material. The great spiritual fact must be brought out that man is, not shall be, perfect and immortal. We must hold forever the consciousness of existence, and sooner or later, through Christ and Christian science, we must master sin and death. The evidence of man's immortality will become more apparent as material beliefs are given up and the immortal facts of being are admitted. Let unselfishness goodness, mercy, justice, health, holiness, love, the kingdom of heaven, reign within us. And sin, disease, and death will diminish until they finally disappear. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 254. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain, Lo, sad and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain, And wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, Illumed by faith, and breathed in raptured song, with love perfumed. Hymn number 254.
is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures, he makes me lie down. He restores my soul and leads me on for his name, for his great name. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me. Let's now sing hymn number 396. Ye messengers of Christ, his sovereign voice obey. Arise and follow where he leads, and peace attend your way. Hymn number 396.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth, matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal, matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. Sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent things. Amen. <laughs> 